Hi, my name's Tracy L, and today we're going to be turning a comic that I did in my sketchbook into an animated piece. We're going to have a series of videos that show the process. Each section will have its own video, and the sections are storyboarding, the animatic, revisions, keyframes, animation, post-production, animation, compositing, and touch-ups. And today we are going to be talking about storyboarding. Storyboarding is so cool. It's probably my favorite part of the animation process. And what we're going to be storyboarding is a comic I did in my sketchbook into an animated piece. If you have any questions about the process or things you'd like to see from this series, let me know in the comments below. So, how do you start off a storyboard? Well, you have to have an idea. And your idea can be anything from a doodle you did at the park or a simple comic that you made with your friends. Or maybe even you read a book and you want to draw out something that characters you relate to really did. Whatever your idea is, write it down. Even if it makes sense only to you, it's better to have it somewhere in a physical form than in your head. If you have writer's block, start doodling and then put those random doodles together in a sequence. It'll really surprise you like how much anything put in a sequence can make sense. And even if it doesn't make sense, fake it till you make it. Ideas will start to evolve the more you enjoy yourself in the process. Now, once you have your idea, or at least the gist of it, you have to draw it out. A good storyboard can accurately tell the whole story without any words or explanation. You want to make sure that it is a three-act story structure. A three-act story structure consists of a beginning, middle, and end. There's a character, something happens to that character, and they have to deal with it. How that character deals with it is up to you. There's this really great book by Sid Field called Screenplay, The Foundations of Screenwriting that is great for animators because a lot of it has to do with visual storytelling. How do you tell a story with pictures or write a story with pictures? So your story has to have a beginning, middle, and end involving introduction, conflict, and resolution. Introduction, who are your characters and what are their desires? Conflict, what is the task that they have to complete to achieve these desires? And resolution, do they accomplish the task? Sometimes, not necessarily in that order chronologically, but that structure will give your content a nicer form. So for this storyboard, our story is Grace is trying to beat a world record for fastest bite of an airborne pie. Her friends Genevieve and Courtney are helping. Genevieve blasts a pie bazooka at Grace's face while Courtney times the event. Since I'm going off a sketchbook idea, I have inkling of what I want my shots to look like. But later we can revise the shots after looking at the animatic to make them more dynamic or easier to read. The focus of your storyboard right now is just to try to organize your ideas down on paper so that you can step back and figure out what's the best way to approach. You want your board to be expressive and dynamic, but you're not keyframing. You're not showing every move that every character is going to make. You're only drawing statements that will move your story forward. Color says a lot about the mood of the characters and the tone of the piece that you're making. What do you want your piece to be? Dark and moody or light and bubbly. You can really say a lot with color. Or maybe you want to contrast the two moods. Maybe you want to take a super dramatic subject and make it look like it was dip in cotton candy. And until somebody really thinks about it, it just it it looks it looks pretty. But then when they really think about it, it's like, wow, that's a little messed up. That's always fun to do. I always like that kind of art. Don't worry about the background too much right now. You want to keep the background simple so you can focus on the actions of the characters. But if you do have a specific location in mind of where you want your story to be taking place, it's a good idea at this stage to do some research and have visual references for your setting. A collection of visual references and recording things from life make you a stronger artist. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong. It's not cheating if you collect visual references. It doesn't mean you don't have anything in your head. It means you're giving yourself a, a library of resourceful information that you can always come back to. You should rely on experiences and visual information from life to feed your imagination. Personally, I take a lot of inspiration from photography. Look at films or look at the work that other people are doing. There's so much artwork out there 
now that it's so easy to find and see. Even recording the world around you, if you notice something interesting, try to draw it real quick in your sketchbook or make a note. The world around us is constantly changing, and so are the icons. And in order to keep up, you really have to do your research. Some people use Pinterest to collect visual references. I personally like to keep all my references in a folder on my computer, but it's always learning, always, always constantly updating yourself so that you can keep up with your viewer. You're a storyteller, and to tell a story effectively, people have to be able to relate, so it's always learning. Learning is so much easier if you don't have to do it alone. You can subscribe for more videos about animation, illustration, inspiration, and how to bring your ideas to life. And while you're bringing your ideas to life in the storyboard, make sure you keep in mind that this blank page isn't flat. You're building a 3D space on a 2D plane. It should never feel like you're watching a stage play where the sets are all from one viewpoint. Consider your pen to be a camera. You can put people in front behind, on top, or below your character. You can make people follow your character through a space. Your camera can be a character in itself. There's no restriction of the viewpoints that you can make with your storyboard, as long as it isn't flat. And learning to build a three-dimensional space on a 2D plane does take practice, but it gets so much easier once you start doing it. I think the hardest part is getting started because getting started can be so intimidating because you start to think, what if I do a bad job? What if I'm not approaching this correctly? But the good thing about art is that the harder you try, the better you get. The worst work you'll ever make is at the beginning and anything you do after that is much better because you learn something from your first try. I'm still learning and it's nice to know that you can only get better. If you found this video helpful or you know anyone who loves animation, share this video with them. But yeah, that's how you make a storyboard. Give it a shot yourself and let me know how it comes out in the comments or leave a message for me in any of my social media sites, which you can find here or in the description box. Until next time, stay in touch. Thanks. Bye.